Welcome back to Road of Abundance, guys. Today, we have Sandy Grigsby, and she is an expert on personal branding, image, self-confidence, um, so Sandy, tell us a little bit more about you. Like, I know you have a super healthy lifestyle. You're helping people like you're living your dream life. So tell me, tell me like a little bit more about you. Thanks for having me here, Mike. Well, I was born in Switzerland and I grew up in Northern California. And when I was a kid growing up, I was the kid that didn't fit in. My mom was from Switzerland, so she spoke a bunch of different languages and had a thick accent, and she didn't get American culture, so would ask her things and she didn't understand it. And my dad was American, uh, he was Black American, and where I grew up, there were no Blacks except for my dad. So growing up, I felt like I didn't fit in, I didn't really have my own clique, I moved around from group to group and always had issues with other kids. And I remember getting into fights in school with the kids and the teachers would pull me aside and say, you're better than that and don't get in a fight with them. And I'd be like, but she did this and it was wrong. And all of these things just cumulatively affected my self-image. And also my dad, he was in the Air Force and he was super strict and he nicknamed himself the totalitarian daddy. And so that also impacted my self-image. So as I got older, I just felt really unsure. I had no confidence and I did everything to please other people and make people like me. And that's how I got to where I'm at today. Awesome. So like you had some trauma, some stuff happening in the past. And then at one point you were kind of like tired of what, what you were like to let those back event, the past event control the future for you. So you decided to kind of fix yourself, like work on yourself and become the better version of yourself. And since you had experience with knowing the struggle and overcoming it, you decided that you wanted to help people. Yeah. And it actually happened way later in life because for years coming out of high school, going into college, graduating college, going to work for different companies, I just dealt with stuff that made me didn't feel like I fit in. Uh, for example, in the workplace, I was sexually harassed all the time. And I actually left jobs because I felt so uncomfortable. And, and I could have sued them or done something like that, but I was too afraid to even do it. I had such low self-worth and who would believe me? So I ended up quitting job after job, moving from job to job and just taking verbal, physical, mental abuse from my employers. I started taking it from the relationships that I was in, the friendships that I was in. I mean, there's this crazy story. And when I tell people, they're like, what? But when I was 20, I befriended this lady in Los Angeles that she's famous. Like people know about her. Like there's websites built to stop her. And I'm actually mentioned in these websites because she completely had me under her thumb. Like she brainwashed me. She manipulated me. She would do little things that was called gaslighting, like saying, oh, Sandy, have you ever noticed when your hair is pulled back, no one ever comments on how you look. That's because you're not very pretty. You're only pretty when people see your hair because you have beautiful hair, that's it. So mentally it would start working on you. And so this crazy lady just took over my life. She would control who I saw, who I hung out with, who I would date, and it just made it worse and worse and worse. So it was like abuse from men at work and then abuse from a woman in my life. And that destroyed friendships of mine. And it just, I struggled. And so it took, decades for me to break free from the challenges that I faced of dealing with this low self image. That's really what it was. I had no self worth. Yeah. I had no confidence. I had no self image that was strong at all. I thought I was too fat when I was underweight. I thought I wasn't pretty enough. I obsessed over how I looked. I obsessed over the things that I did because I wanted other people to like me. So I would make these fabulous meals for people and I would go above and beyond for my clients doing work. And I just went above and beyond on everything because I was so desperate to get people to like yeah. me. Seeking I validation. See yeah, I was absolutely. And it was because I had no self-image and that's, yeah, that's what led me here. That's crazy. I, I remember when I was like building uh, the road to abundance, uh, there's a whole chapter on self-image and there was one of the, he was like one of the most famous first black plastic surgeon. And he noticed that some people, no matter what they were doing aesthetically, it could never fix the image because it was the trauma in the subconscious mind. So he noticed that some people, they would change some stuff and be like, wow, it's like total change. And half of the people, the rest were like, oh, I'm still ugly. I'm still fat. I'm still this. I'm still that. When 
in reality, um, it was not the case. And then he started yeah. like making study and stuff. I don't remember the exact title of the book, but he wrote the book on it. And it's like the mirror versus yourself. It's basically what you see is never going to change. It's, it's, and then, yeah, you're, you're totally right. And we're going to talk about like how to change what, what, what did change. But once you did the change, like once you really went and you dive deep and you did take care of that, it changed like super fast. Like once you Absolutely. make the commitment to work on yourself, it's like, that's what I want to kind of bring in that podcast, like to people that no matter if it's health, no matter if it's self-image, no matter what you want to work on, when you really go in the subconscious mind and you reprogram it, you rewire it, then the change it's instant. It's like you, your life will start to change and you can create a new future from there. So tell me like you had that uh, upcoming, then what was the event that you were like, this is enough. And what did you do to become? And now that you're successful? Well, <laughs> that's a great question. It, took me going through really disastrous relationships and being so lonely. <clears throat> like, for example, I was in a relationship. I was engaged to someone for quite a few years. We were together for over six years. And one day someone came up to me that I like a new friend I'd made. And they said, you're the loneliest person I've ever met. And I was like, what? And I thought about it. The guy that I was with was never around. He worked all the time. He was a gaslighter. I was so lonely and I was going to the gym two to three hours a day. Yeah, that, that's and, insane. I mean, it was, I was working out so hard. My body fat was probably 16%. I was super lean, but I was unhealthy. And I was yeah. so stressed out that it got to the point where one day a woman tapped me on the shoulder and said, sweetie, are you okay? She goes, do you have, and she whispered it, cancer. Oh my she God. She asked me if I had cancer because I was so emaciated. I was working out. My muscles were super ripped, but I was so skinny and yeah. gaunt looking because I was miserable. And that's when I realized I had to get out of that relationship. And guess what I did? I went right back into another one that yeah. wasn't the same, but it was just <clears throat> as destructive. And I got out of that and went right back into another one. And then I realized years later that I had this cycle, this pattern. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't figure out why, why do I keep ending up in the wrong relationships? Why do yeah. I keep ending up feeling so miserable? And that's when I started to do the personal development stuff. I started reading books on confidence. I started reading books on self-worth. I started going to Tony Robbins events. And actually yeah. I started out going to a business mastery event. I'd even go to his regular events. because I was yeah. like, I don't need that. I just need help with my business. I couldn't yeah. figure out what it was. And after a long journey of discovery of going to all of these different personal development things, I did feminine movement. I did a course that taught you pole dancing to get in touch with your inner self, like all of these different things. It finally dawned on me that the thing that I was missing the most wasn't the relationship. It wasn't the money. Cause I had even learned how to ask for more money. I was able to ask for what I was worth, but I didn't even see it in myself it yeah. was because I didn't love myself. Exactly. That, that was that's it. Super important. Yeah. That was the one thing. And I hadn't figured it out. I figured it out when I was in my late thirties. That, 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 yeah, the, the two things that I, um, we're going to talk about health stuff later, but two things that I can relate is like loving yourself. You can't have a, a healthy relationship if you don't love yourself first, because how can you learn to love someone that if you don't love yourself and then this will create the same problem because you're going to attract someone that doesn't love himself so it's going to be like uh, negativity compound and then the the other thing is creating the future from the past because you have those trauma the universe and the consciousness whatever you want to call it knows you're like okay sandy that's what she thinks she works she works bad men not not bad men but like men that treat her not good this is what she thinks she wears this is what we're going to manifest for her because that's what she's aligned with so and and same thing like but even when people want millions of dollars if you don't think that you worked it inside and you really believe it not just saying i worked it and your conscious mind five percent thinks it but your subconscious mind is aligned with that thought you can't manifest it so i see it often and i was I was like you in the past. That's why I can't relate. I had so many fucked up relationships. My last ex was a 
full on prostitute. And I gave her a chance thinking she was going to change. And she did so many stories. All my ex cheated. And, and then people, they're going to be like, but you look good. Yes, I had self-confidence. Yes, I had some stuff. But the thing is, I didn't fix all the other issue that I was seeking validation. So I was attracting those women that were hot, but that were not really aligned with whatever. And it was like more like a trophy wife. You know what I mean? And that's the thing that I can relate. It's like you keep until I fix myself. That's why I went six years single after. I was like, nah, the next person I attract I need it to be there. So you need to love yourself. You need self-confidence. You need all that stuff. So that was the, the click for you. You you started to love yourself mm -hmm. and then? Yeah, because when I started to love myself, I no longer tolerated things that were abusive. Boundaries. I had set up such great boundaries. I mean, uh, like, yeah. like really, really <laughs> strict ones for myself. If this happens, this will not happen, right? Yeah. And once I did that, everything changed. I was able to even command more for my work. I wasn't yeah. like, there was a point where I was, I used to charge because I started out doing photography, personal branding photography. And I used to charge like 500 bucks for photo sessions. And then I was like, I'm not making enough money. Okay, I'm going to charge eight. And <clears> everybody <throat> told me, no, no one's going to pay you $800 for a photo session because in Los Angeles, you can get a photographer to do your headshots for 150 bucks. No one's going to hire you. And I was like, okay, but I got people to hire me, but I'm still like, gosh, I'm still not making enough. And my makeup artist was making 400 bucks for her makeup. And I'm like, she's making half of what I'm making. She's doing a fraction of the work. So I started asking more. I got up to 3000 and then I got up to 7,000. And now we're at $10,000 for photo sessions. And I have people from the past going, oh, your photo sessions weren't, you know, they were much cheaper back when I'm like, yeah, those were like, you know, 2014 prices. This is now, yeah. and this is what I'm worth. And what you get is so much more. And I get what I ask because I'm worth it. I'm not going to put yeah. time into something that I'm not getting paid what I'm, I'm worth. So yeah. it took me a long time to figure that out. And like I said, that goes with friendships. I don't get into relationships with people who are going to take advantage of me, who are going to make me feel bad, who are going to do things that I don't enjoy. So yeah. and, I'm and very selective about that now. And for boundaries, it, it always like astonished me now that I hear people like, Oh, it's so hard to quit my relationship. It's so hard, this and that. No, nah, for me, it's so easy. Because it's so easy. When, I, when you put those boundaries and you love yourself first, this girl did this. I, I understand things can happen. I'm going to give her one chance. I'll be like, listen, maybe you said something you didn't think. Maybe like, I'll give you one day, go think about your action. And then we can have a communication talk. But if you're not aligned, if you like, if you're going to treat me like that, then we're done. Or if, if I see patterns that I'm like, and, and, and I always tell, like I used to tell girls when I was seeing them through my change, I was like, it's not you. You're, it's not that you're a bad person. It's just, we don't align. Like yeah. there's so many cars on the market. You may be like driving Mercedes. I might be like driving BMW. And at the end of the day, it doesn't mean Mercedes is not good. I just want a BMW. That's the spec I want. And, and then it's just when you put those boundaries for work, for anything, you don't accept that stuff. It's the same now uh for your price like same for me when you know your worth and you're fully assuming the price that you're charging because you know what it is it's gonna attract first people that align with this yes. so like the people that tells me you're too expensive you're not there yet it's okay you're not you don't understand it in your journey i i respect it i, I was too. there once and and it's good but when you're gonna understand the price and, and I'm thinking that I'm not charging enough. And, and that's how I see it. When I say my price, I'm like, this is what I charge. You want it, you want it, you don't, you don't. I know it worth it and more. And now that's the thing, you own it because you have self-confidence, you know what you worth. And I'm not thinking about overcharging because it's the right price for what you offer. Yeah, it's true. I've had people tell me, Sandy, what you do, you should be charging 40, 50, $60,000. I said, Yes, but for what I do, I'm happy and I feel good at $10,000 for a photo session. It makes yeah. me feel good. I know I'm delivering. I know I'm giving amazing service and value. Yeah, I could charge $50,000, $100,000, and maybe I will one day. But right now, that's where I'm at, and it feels good. And you're exactly right. When I raised my prices and I stuck to it, so I didn't negotiate down. I didn't try to, you know, I'm going to give you a deal because, and I just said, no, this is my price. The clients are so much more appreciative. They oh, do yeah. the work. 
they oh, yeah. are amazing. And the results are even greater because they follow the process. They trust mm. the process one and thing, that boosts their confidence and it boosts mine. Yeah. Win -win. And one thing I remember uh, when I was having a chat with, with Andy Frizella and stuff like that, and uh, we're talking about a business and he's like, bro, don't give discount. Like, like yeah. we're talking about something and you know, all those marketing strategy and stuff. And I respect it. If you want to give discount, like for product and stuff, sometimes it's, it's okay. But for me, I think about what I do, like in terms of road to abundance as a Louis Vuitton. And if your friend got a 50% discount, it doesn't feel equal. Everybody pay the same price. There's no discounts that it's always going to be that price or higher. It, yeah. it could be higher if I decide to increase my price. But the thing is, there's no such thing as discount for me in, in, in that specific field that I do. And like you said, your client are going to appreciate it because imagine a long-term client for me that would come, yo, Mike, I, you, you did that to my friend. And I was like, I was a client before and he paid half the price. Oh, I'm sorry. There was a promotion. Then it's like, for me, same price. I decided like that for my app, same price and stuff like that. So it was like, it, it, it keeps people in line with, with what you preach. And mm -hmm. um, now that you became successful, you change your self image like things that started to align. Now you're in a healthy relationship. Like, so what did you do like to really self-love yourself? What action or habit or things did you do? And also to align with your work and your life or what boundaries and stuff like that? Well, the first thing was when I understood that self-love was the priority, I no longer tolerated things. So the boundaries were it. I wouldn't let people speak to me in a certain mm -hmm. way. And I had to practice, for example, one of my issues that I had was I didn't like conflict. I would avoid it. So yeah. if I got into a search situation with a friend, a relationship, or even a client, and there was conflict, I would just get quiet and say nothing. So what I realized was in the boundaries, I could not allow people to treat me a certain way anymore. Hmm. And I had to speak up. So yeah. I had to build yeah. the habit of being vocal. So I would really process like, am I the one being the issue or are they being the issue? And if they're being the issue, is it because of an issue I have? Is it, is it triggering a trauma that I have or is it really they're just being the issue? So once I got very clear on that, then I would know how to address it. And once yeah. I knew how to address it, then I had to practice the art of speaking up and saying something. Yeah. And I'd be very kind and articulate. And I have to tell you, there are times where it did not go my way where it went really south and the person just flew off the handle and things ended badly. But the great part was that person was removed from my life. And, and okay. that was okay. I was like, this is easier actually. Yeah. So, and, and the majority of the times the other person would understand and go, wow, I didn't look at it like that. You're right. I'm sorry. And then we could move forward. And yeah. I've even had a situation where I, I set my boundaries. I spoke up, the person blew up. I don't want to be friends with you. I don't want to work with you. I don't want to do anything with you and completely sever the relationship. And five years later, they came back and apologized. Yeah, and everybody it was their like, own journey. Everybody yeah. come on time. Like there was um, in the four of you men, don't take anything personally. And it stuck with me. It's like being respectful and saying things respectfully. You can always say like, in my opinion, in my feeling. And then when you say something, and the other person is affected, trigger or anything. I don't take it personally. No matter what the person says, hey, I gave my message. Then you do whatever. If it offends you, if because I'm saying something, it offends you, anything. I'm not responsible for how you act. I'm not responsible for your trigger, your things. You do you. I do me. I'll be still happy. I'll still be peaceful. Like, I think that's the thing. People, they react too, too much to other people and you're the only person to blame for whatever, like in your life. And so are they, they're the only person to blame. So exactly. if I go, if I go in traffic, someone cut me and I decide to be a fucking shit show and, ah, and I hung, it's me. I'm affected. You, know that happens too. you do that yeah. all the time. I heard you just earlier. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, yeah, I have my day that I'm like, fuck. Oh, and then I'm like, ah, oh, it, it's nothing. Cause the guy is in his car. He's maybe listening to music. He doesn't even give a fuck. And then you put exactly. yourself in a bad situation. So you have to remember that when you're going to say things to people and, and I'm not saying like you insult them and it's their fault if they react. I'm saying you say things nicely. Mm -hmm. Hey, I don't like when you do this or this, or I feel like that. And the person overreact, then it's not on you, but it's you, not on you, you respect your boundaries. That's, and very that's, important. Ex that's exactly what I did. So I started by respecting boundaries. And then the second thing was 
this one, this one people have a hard time with, and it kind of goes in alignment with the boundaries is I started curating my friends. Mm -hmm. It's really important. You are the sum of the people that you hang out with. And it's like a five people, right? I realized that some of the people I was hanging out with were just negative. Mm -hmm. And they didn't intend to be negative. They yeah. just were. And so what I did was I wasn't like, I'm not hanging out with you anymore because you're negative. I wasn't, I didn't do anything like that, but I made it clear to them. <clears throat> you are in a negative place. Mm-hmm. I love you. Once you can reset yourself, I would love to hang out with you. I had okay. to tell them I couldn't just disappear on them. And guess what? They would come back months, years later and say, you know what? That talk you had with me really helped to change my life. Thank you. Yeah. And we became friends again or not. So it just, it just depends. But once I curated the people that I was hanging out with, everything changed. And I would say another thing at that time that I did was I started writing in a gratitude journal. That's amazing. Yeah. That, you told me you were strong with that. Huge. We, we're going to talk about the gratitude journal. Keep, keep it in mind. What I want to say about friends is uh, I remember because this happened to me, same thing, like, but the opposite. I was at 24 years old. I was in my rolling, girls left, girls right, this and that. And then I had two successful friends drop me. Friends from fuck, I, like I knew for years, 10, 15. It's like, oh, they think they're better than me or this or that. And then you, I, I lived the, the opposite side of it. it. No, it's not that. It's just they're not aligning with you anymore. They still be friends. They still respect you. It's more like they become acquaintance because you're, you're, like, it's okay to keep those people in terms of acquaintance. Like, mm-hmm. you don't need to insult them. You don't, It's just, and if you tell them, like, respectfully, like you said, hey, we don't align by value at the moment. It's okay. I'm just going to take, take a step back from the relationship because you can have friends, but the five core people, like you said, it could be five, could be six, whatever. The closest people to you, of course, is going to represent you because they feed your energy. So. Yeah. It's going to remind me to be positive if you, Cindy, is always like, what a beautiful day today. Fuck, yeah. The sun is amazing. Like, what a be? And if it's like, oh, it's so hot in Miami. Fuck, it's hot. I hate it here. Like, oh, there's always two sides of seeing things. And, and it, it's always funny because that's one of the, be- the biggest questions I get all the time on social media. How are you always positive? Yeah. Like, How are you always negative? I mean, it exactly. What's hard? wrong with you? Yeah. Isn't it hard to be negative? Like, what a fucking shitty day today. Like, wow. Oh, fuck. My car is so slow. I have to put gas. Oh, fuck that guy. He cut me. Like, isn't it fucking demanding on your soul? It is. Like, that? like, like, wow. like one is people always complain <laughs> about the rain. Like, oh, it's raining. Oh, this sucks. And I'm like, oh, it's raining. Because I love the rain. I lived in Bali for the longest time. And I uh. absolutely loved it because all the little animals, the rain animals, the wet animals come out and I go, oh, what are we going to see now? Like, if you live in frog, Bali, you have like- to love the rain. Oh my God, the little, like the little thing, I don't remember how they call it when you're in scooter and you need to wrap it in your head, put your helmet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. you have the little thing, like you're riding your scooter and then yeah. it's raining so hard on you. And it cleans but- the streets and it's so yeah. beautiful. I love the rain. So I'm like, yes, or it's raining. I get to stay in and watch Netflix yeah. and chill. And like, it's amazing. But I- now that you change your mindset, because, yeah. I was guys we're not perfect we're not different than you if you're listening today and you think like that we're, we're not better we are just evolve into this mindset into this gratitude and we're, we're gonna talk about where it's coming from all that stuff but I remember back then I used to say fuck I hate the snow I hate it. it's cold it's this and that and now I'm like fuck I wish I was in the snow right now and I could take a cold bath and I could do this and I, it's, it's like now I True. see to love beauty of things and and yeah. and coming especially LA taught me to love rain even more because it's never raining so when it was raining I was like wow it's actually nice like so it's just a mindset and that's where I wanted to keep the IB so now you love yourself you're evolving your business and all that start from going to heal the trauma becoming a new version of yourself creating a new future manifesting your higher self now but mm-hmm. uh, we're going to talk, I want to talk about your health very soon, but first let's talk about things that you do on a daily. So gratitude journal, yeah, my, my girl is amazing with that. She writes it every day. She do the three, six, nine. She bought, bought me the book, you know, three, six, nine method, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. no, it's I don't like think a so. gratitude journal and you do an incantation. You write it three times in the morning, six times in the evening, nine times at night. And it's like, Okay, like I manifest money easily and 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 uh, abundantly in my life every day, uh, being whatever you want to be. So things like that, like being grateful. 
So tell me a little bit about your routine, your every day to keep that mindset high. Well, it's going to kind of cycle into health, which we'll talk about, but because of my health, I had to really set a routine in place because without it, you get sick and die. Let's just be real. I almost died just a few months ago. And what I do is clearly the gratitude journal works. The gratitude journal is like one of the top things. And I do mine instead of repeating, like you said, my thing is writing something new every Everything. single day. Yeah. And I do it in the evening right before bed because then it allows your brain to process on it. But the <laughs> yeah. key is never to write the same thing. So yeah, that's the challenge. Yeah. yeah. So some people go, well, I love my mom. You can write, you love your mom. Then the next time, why do you love your mom? What do you yeah. love about your mom today? What particular thing did your mom do? Like make it different. So you can still say, I love my mom because she, this, I love my mom because she, that, or today, my mom did this and you have to change yeah. it. And that really challenges you things. Like I, I would even push people to write three things. Cause one, it's too easy. Try yeah, to write yeah. three things that maybe your partner did a friend did, and then work something about work or, or, or your day that you're grateful for. Like I'm grateful. It was amazing sunny today. And this happened. Yeah, no, I, I write three things every day, but I'm just saying each thing has yeah, to yeah, be yeah. No, so, I'm, I'm putting a challenge to, if you're listening, guys, three things. Sandy three. was trying to be nice. She was saying one for you, but I know she does more than that. <laughs> so keep going. <laughs> so uh, the gratitude journal is important, but also I like to meditate in the morning. Mm -hmm. I meditate in the middle of the day and I meditate right before bed. What and kind the, of meditation and all along? So... Some people have heard of this, some people haven't, but I like doing the Silva Ultramind method. So it's different than the standard meditation where you have to empty your mind because I used to do that meditation often and it was doing well for me, but it wasn't taking me where I wanted to go. So when I heard about the Silva Ultramind method, I was like, huh, this is interesting. Let me just try it. And it has been amazing. What so through the Silva Ultra My Method, you can reprogram your mind. You can, it's kind of like ESP where you can see things or like make things happen. And I know it sounds totally woo woo and crazy, but it's a programming of your mind. So you actually do a countdown three, and then you go to two, and then you go to one. And these are different levels of your mind. And when you're in level one, which is the deepest level of your mind, that's when you can manifest more things. So you can ask questions. For example, uh, I'm having a challenge with this. What should I do? Mm -hmm. And in, as you're in this deep level of the mind space, the answers come to you. And sometimes they come so abruptly. You're like, what? that's the answer. What? That can't be the answer. And then you're like, wow, it's the answer. Is and when like, you start uh, implementing it, magic happens. Is it like music? How long is it? Is it somebody talking? Like, how does it work? So the one that I did was the Jose Silva's Ultramind Method. You can get it on Audible and it's an audiobook, and it's from years ago, decades ago. I think it was recorded in like 2000. So it's funny. It's like the cheesy music, you know, <laughs> but I go through that and then they actually tell you memorize these meditation methods and they're super simple because it's the same process on repeat. And then I practice them. I do them in the morning, I do them in the evening and I do them in the middle of the day. The reason I'm doing them three times a day is because if you do it three times a day, it helps you heal. And since I almost died, I am in a process of healing my body. So I yeah. make sure to do that. And then the other thing it also does is help you find clarity or make decisions in life. And yeah, it's, like the, a reset. it's like a reset. But the one thing that makes it really special is they say, whatever you do, you have to help two or more people. So if you're trying to heal your body while doing the Jose Silva ultra my method, and you're just Try focus on yourself. I'm healthy. I'm going to cure my whatever or something. This isn't happening or I'm feeling more vibrant and energetic. And you're only focusing on you. It's probably not going to work so well. So what they do is have you do it for other people. So when I do my healing, my body healing meditation, I also put my mind in a place where I'm healing someone else. So I do, okay. I do about three to four people in one session. So I'll heal my mom. I'll heal my friend who's in South Africa. Her mom's struggling with something right now. So I heal her and I'll heal a friend that I heard of that has some health issues. And so I help people throughout my meditations and mm -hmm. myself. That's and awesome. from doing that, I've seen results, more vibrancy. Uh, I feel more youthful. Right now I'm working on making all my hairs, my gray hairs go away. I only have like five, let's be real, but I'm still, I'm making them go away through my healing. <laughs> That's awesome. <clears throat> so amazing. So guys, 
just to recap pillars that are really important healing the trauma it's very very important healing uh and like cleaning having a new state to really process stuff letting go of the past then incorporating the good habits raising your vibration meditation and all the good stuff and the last pillar uh, there could be more but the last pillar we're gonna touch today is um the health pillar so you were successful you were you did ted talk you did a lot of good stuff but you might have neglected a little bit your uh your gut health your health in general and also people if you don't know the gut health is responsible of 95 percent of the happy hormone the energy in the body so if you don't biohack this um it's going to be tremendous uh things happening like negative so energies uh disease are energies you can clean them and then also you need to heal your body with the good stuff so tell us a little bit about your story um what happened to you and like what do you do now well <laughs> it's interesting so i worked on the mental stuff i worked on the trauma i worked on eating healthy or so i thought i was eating healthy <laughs> and I started traveling. I was living the dream life. Everything was great. We left Los Angeles, moved to Bali. We were living in Dubai. We were traveling all over the world. Life was amazing. Mm -hmm. But the thing that I had neglected was even though I was doing the mindfulness stuff, I wasn't taking care of my body in the same way. And I caught myself slipping into depression. And I help people with their confidence. And I talk to them about, you know, you can fix all these things. And, and a lot of it comes from trauma but I hadn't realized how deeply connected depression and trauma is to our actual body health. Mm -hmm. And it started taking a toll and I had communicative things that had been happening from too much heavy metals from eating a lot of fish at one point in my life. One point I was vegan and I was vegetarian and that was causing health issues. Uh, even though I wasn't eating that much sugar, I was still eating sugar and I was still eating dairy and wheat and gluten and all of those things. And even though I had tested negative for allergies to all of them, they were still gradually and collectively impacting, impacting my health. Yeah. And I ended up getting a parasite from, we don't really know where it could have been Mexico when I was traveling. It could have been the U S we have no idea. And the parasite was probably two feet long and about as thick as my pinky finger. It was huge. And it, yeah, it, it was a round worm, which we found out later, some type of like round worm, nasty. And it was in my intestines. And I went to an event in Dubai with 150,000 people. And I didn't want to risk getting COVID. And because I was going to be exposed to so many people, I was there speaking on stage about personal branding and confidence. I was afraid that I was going to get exposed. So I was doing the protocol that's supposed to prevent you from getting sick which was one of the things was to take ivermectin. And I had come from Bali. I had it. I took it. I was like, okay, I'll be good. I did not get COVID. So I was like, woohoo, I'm super good. But I did get a giant worm come out. And oh it was that gosh. huge beast. And I was like, what is that? And I didn't think much of it because I called my doctor friends and they're like, oh, you took ivermectin? You're fine. Don't worry about it. It killed all your parasites. Well, that wasn't true. Because what I didn't realize was when the worm detaches from the lining of your intestines, the worm releases little eggs. And then those little eggs take some time to hatch. But when they hatch, you've got more than one worm. You've got many worms. So that worm became many worms and it contributed to one thing after another. I got a kidney infection. I got gut issues. I was put on antibiotics. I got COVID eventually. Uh, the COVID plus the kidney infection plus everything else landed me in the hospital. I thought I was gonna die. It was really, really scary. Um, and then as I thought I had pulled out of that and I felt better, progressively, I started getting more depressed and I had more health issues and I was more fatigued. I'm like, this doesn't make sense because I don't have COVID mm. anymore yeah. and I don't have this worm anymore because I took the ivermectin. At the time, I didn't know I still had parasites. And I just started getting so sick to the point where I couldn't stand. I couldn't walk. I couldn't speak. My words were like this all the time. I had no motivation. I slept all day. I, yeah, if yeah. I ate something, I was so physically exhausted that I could barely get to the car to get home. It was so bad that I started and, losing my hair. And what like, I want to, what I want to say about that. Um, so for you, that people that listen, you like, you're like, oh, it was the, the, the parasite or this or that. 
Not exactly. Like the parasite does some damage at the beginning. Once it's out, it's out. The problem is the food and the things that you put in your body feed that infection, feed the bad bacteria in your gut, that sugar, all that stuff. So the thing is, even if she didn't get a parasite, this just activated and, and kind of like quantum leap the problem that she would have had in one year. The thing is often we don't realize, but there's like layers in the, in, in the intestine and stuff like that. And like I had leaky gut for a long time. It's like when it's not healed, you would eat stuff that would seem like nothing, tomato, whatever, and boom, it goes in your streams, uh, dairy, whatever, and it fucks you up like there's no tomorrow. And then like Normal. you said, um, bleeding, like whatever you want to name it, and then you lose your energy, you have no energy, then you're depressed. And then even if you have that good mindset and all the good stuff, if you don't treat your body like it's a temple, this is going to happen. And that's what I really tell people. It's not only about looking fucking amazing. It's about feeling amazing and feeding your body with the best that you can do. So now, um, now you're on the, your, your yield, um, you worked on it. Like what, what did you kind of remove? And like, what did you well, realize from that? That was the thing. I was on a gluten-free diet when I was going through this and I was still getting progressively sicker. And I ended up seeing a specialist in, in Arizona and she diagnosed me with having parasites. But what I also had was an overgrowth of fungus and bacteria from all the antibiotics I had been taking. Mm -hmm. And it was, like I said, it was compounded. And so I had to go on a journey of healing my gut health. I had to completely remove, even though I was already not doing gluten, I had to remove Wheat. all sugar. I had to remove all oil, except for the healthy oils, which was olive oil, coconut oil, avocado oil. I had to remove most things that, I mean, everything that was processed. I had to take out yeah. nuts. I had to take out legumes. I had to drink special filtered water. She gave me detox supplements to take the heavy metals out of my body. She gave me whole food supplements to heal the parts of my gut and my organs. Mm -hmm. She had me doing all kinds of things. And it was a hard process to get used to eating differently. I had to eat steak for the first time in my life in 32 years. I mean, I was a vegetarian who ate fish. And then I was a vegetarian who ate fish and chicken. And mm. then I was a vegan. And then I was, you know, but I hadn't eaten beef or pork or anything like that in 32 years. So eating it was really hard, but I had to do it. And once I did it, everything changed. My hair stopped falling out. My skin got clearer and Better. softer. And what's most magnificent, it got visibly tighter because I'm going to be 44 this year. And my skin looks tighter now than it did six months ago. So- to explain this kind of process, um, because a lot of people are not super familiar with that. Let me, let me tell you that guys, if, if your body is so busy at healing your gut and focusing on only that, because your body is smart, is it's going to fix the problem. But the thing is it puts all the energy, all the healing cell, everything in it to fight that, that, that war that you're giving him. So it doesn't have time to heal your, your hair, your face, your skin, your, 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 your body's going to age. So it's not only like the, the, the sugar is not only damaging your gut, it's damaging your whole body at one. And it's like a bomb. It's like just, it's going to collapse at one point. And um, for everyone that's, because there's a few things that you can do. Um, and it, it would be too long to name the list of everything that you've been doing and, and in here. So in the road to abundance, I have a whole chapter on this, everything biohacking, everything you can consume and all that stuff. And it's super important where I wanted to, to give a message, which I really like, because we've been talking through this journey uh, that you had um, with your gut health. And I was like, the problem I think is society puts things, chicken is healthy. Not necessarily. I don't think chicken is that healthy because it, it like, there's a lot of things that we think are healthy. And then when I was talking with Dave Asprey, it was funny. Thanks to Ken, put me on a video call with him. And I was like, I, what, you keep saying kale and spinach are bad. Like if, if you eat them raw, he's like, yeah, because of this, this, this. And I explained it in that in the chapter. And I was like, wow. So all those people eating those salad or those new oil, um, the um, vegetable oil and all that stuff, mm. it's damaging your body, all the corn. Think about it, guys. Just a quick thing about corn. When you eat it and when it come out, it's the same. 
Yeah, exactly. So, I was just going to say. <laughs> remember, your body it didn't like it. It didn't like it. It didn't absorb it. There was nothing good. Only damage went there. Like, hey, you think your body liked it? It come like this, go out the same way. So think about it next time you eat corn. Look, look in the bathroom and be like, oh, shit, maybe my body doesn't like that shit. So yeah, that I'm I'm super happy now that you're healthy. You took care of that. So that's the three pillar of, of health. And um, now that um, now that I wanna I wanted to ask you a few things about your expertise in terms of what did you see? Like let's say the top three thing that people with lack of confidence or whatever they had to work on. Like what's the three quick tips or three quick fix that people can implement right now? Well, the first one is the diet, because I didn't even realize how much the, the diet was impacting my mental health and my confidence because of the depression it was putting me in. So if you can fix your diet instantly, your confidence is going to jump up because you're going to feel better. Mm -hmm. The second thing is it's absolutely a habit that you have to practice. You can't just be confident. You have to put it into action. So do things that make you feel good. Do things that make you feel confident repeat things. So if you're not good at a skill or trade or something that you're doing and you feel like you don't have confidence in it, do it over and over and over and over until you get really good at it. And that instantly boosts your confidence. And then the last thing is, this one's super fun, but create a style that is unique to you. Because when you show up and you love what you're wearing, who cares what other people think about it? But you're like, mm, I'm so fly right now. I look yeah. so good. This is my color. It feels good on. I like the way it touches. I, I like to touch it. I like the way it feels. If you love what you're wearing, your confidence is going to shoot up. And yeah. most people tend to wear things that someone gave them that they learned to wear. So like their mom taught them how to shop or a parent or a, a partner taught them or friend, right? Mm -hmm. Or that they've just always had. It's just like they're used to it. It's history. Yeah. So when you actually create a style for you, that's something you in intrinsically love and then you wear it, it changes everything for your confidence. I couldn't agree more because one of the main word I use for my chapter on uh, self-image and confidence is be authentic, be real. If you are yourself, the long term will reward, reward it. We are done with the fake it until you make it, exception of the incantation. Telling you you're happy, telling yourself you're happy is the only time you, I want you to fake it until you make it. Fake it for now, and your subconscious mind will make it happen. But for the rest, be your best self, be authentic. It's beautiful to see. And no matter what people say, when you see someone being weird or whatever, but he's authentic, you're like, fuck, that's cool. And, and, and yeah. I think it's becoming a trend and I, I really like that. Um, your other expertise is branding. So I want to give like a few quick tips to people in terms of branding. Yesterday, we did some LinkedIn stuff together. Like um, what, what would be like kind of three quick tips that you would give to people for personal branding, like for, for business related stuff? Well, to begin, make sure that your username is the same across all boards or as close to the same as possible. So you've seen people who have a username and it's like numbers, weird random numbers and it was auto-generated. They don't even think about it. Or uh, one person was using one version of their name, like uh, for example, uh, Richard, I'm just making that up, Richard. And then in another thing, they're Rich or Ricky and it's different yeah. across platforms. That's, that confuses people. So when it comes to personal branding, pick a name that you go by. So if you want to go by like Mike, you go by Mike, you don't go by Michael or Mikhail yeah. or anything else you go by Mike. So keep that the same. And then, like I said, try to keep it as, as the same throughout as you can. Uh, the second one would be, be very clear on what you do and who you help. So one of the issues is Mike, we had this on your profile. If you remember, you said the chakra yeah. Sherpa. But it wasn't clear. And I know you want to be defined as that, but most people didn't know what that is. Yeah. And it was a new thing that you're creating a space for. So they're going to skip over you or be confused. So when you added a different explanation and mm -hmm. simplified it, then you can keep that. Like I call myself the confidence catalyst. Well, most people don't know what that yeah. is, but I want them to learn what it is. So I say okay. personal branding image design expert and confidence catalyst. And I say, I help you with your confidence and personal brand. So I make it really clear. Yeah. And once you get those two things down, you're good. And then the last thing mm -hmm. 
talk about the amazing things that you've accomplished. People <laughs> leave that out all the time. I mean, <clears throat> you might have over 6 million followers across all platforms. That's huge. Most people are lucky if they get to like a thousand, right? <laughs> and you didn't even have that on your LinkedIn. Yeah. That gives you credibility. That gives you authority. Cause then people on LinkedIn, which is a newer platform for you go, oh, wow, he has 6 million followers. how do he do that? I need to learn more. I need to investigate. I need to research. I need to know everything about him. And you grow your following and people <laughs> leave that all the time. I have a client that I worked with who's a Grammy award winner. He never told me I had no idea until I started prying and prying. And then I was like, you have a Grammy. Are you kidding is oh yeah i actually have a couple of grammys oh my gosh <laughs> so it's things like that that we forget because it's normal to us yeah. and we need to put on oh a, another beautiful example one of my clients 19 year old started his own company doing really well i found out that he was the number one ballroom dance champion in all of europe like dancing like ballroom dancing like like fancy dancing, oh, yeah. number one. And no one knew it because he didn't advertise it anywhere. I'm like, what is wrong with you? You're 19. You became a dance champion when you were like 17 or 16. That's huge. Talk about it. It gives yeah. you credibility because the perception of others changes. And that's what you need to do with your personal brand. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, thank you for those quick advice. And guys, if you, if you want more tips, like if you're looking for more specific detail on branding, uh, you can contact Sandy. We'll, we'll give at the end of the podcast all the details. I have a few questions for you. Um, so, like, what's your favorite three books? Oh, that's a great question. Oh, boy. Okay, so <laughs> one of my favorite books is by Alison Armstrong. I, okay, I have to tell you, it's actually two by her. She just ranks high. I, I suggest these to all of my clients, all of my friends, everyone. Alison Armstrong. The first one that I recommend, if you are a guy, read this first. And if you are a woman, read this second. But the it's called Understanding Women by Alison Armstrong. It's such a fabulous book. And yes, ladies, read it too. Because when you read it, you go, oh, oh that's, that's so me. Oh my God, I understand. Oh, I do that, right? And then the other book is The Amazing Development of Men. And they're both by Alison Armstrong. I love the amazing development of men. Guys, read that second, because once you understand women, then you need to understand yourselves. Yeah. For women who read that book, you're like, oh my gosh, it's so clear. And you see all the mistakes that you make in communicating with the different. Yeah. Yeah. yeah men were right. simple. We're like dogs, like Ken was telling me. Like, <laughs> like we love to be affectionated, tell us that we're good boys. And, and then, um, what was the last? I don't remember. I, I it's saw pretty video. true, but there's so much like people are like, no, but it's true. Well, very it's very so simple, easy. very simple being. And women are so complicated. And, and the differences between singular focus and diffuse awareness, awareness. Men are singular focus. They have that one mission. Now that doesn't yeah. mean they can't be diffuse. Diffuse means spread out. They have that mission to hunt that thing, right? They're going to yeah. go and they're going to spread out their ideas to get it, but they're going to get it. Their focus is that. A yeah. woman is diffused. So she's like in the kitchen. She's watching a TV show. She's cooking. She's talking to her girlfriend while watching the TV show, while cooking. And there's somebody at the door and she's got it all. And it's like, and the guy can't handle yeah. it. Things are burning on the stove. And like, <laughs> he, he lost the part of the TV and the friend is yelling at him. Are you there? Are you there? Like, so yeah, this book really, really makes that yeah. clear. And that, then the other, hot. the other book that I think is just one of the most powerful books that absolutely changed my life is The Untethered Soul oh, by Michael Singer, by Michael Singer, one of my yeah. favorites. My girl is reading it right now. She, I think she read it a while ago and then I have just so many books here. So she picked that one. I, I, I actually read it this year. It's, it's amazing. It's such a beautiful book. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta, gotta be ready in your journey to kind of read it. So if you, if you read it, and it doesn't really resonate, pick it up in two years or yep. in one year. Like same as Think and Grow Rich. Think and Grow Rich is a book that you can read anytime. It's, it's going to teach you things like a different moment in your life. And you're going to pick up on the, the things that you didn't pick up the first time for sure. That's three and all of these books. books. I recommend reading them more than once because like yeah. you said, you pick up on different things. I've listened to Alison Armstrong's books <clears throat> multiple times. I think one of them I've, I've listened to her because I listened to it on Audible. I probably heard it like eight times. And every time I hear it, I'm like, 
Oh, I forgot about yeah. that. Oh, I didn't even realize that. Or Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So you got to listen to the books. Over yeah. Time. Sometimes what I do is I read it, like really read it. I'm still super focused and I read a lot of book and then the book that I really like, then I'm going to pick it up again and I'm going to dissect it. Like <laughs> I, I'm still a hundred percent in the book when I read it the first time. But if I know that this book for this specific topic was really good, then I go back and I, I liked everything and I just, I just make it another, like, like really make sure I get everything. Um, what's your favorite quote or mantra? It would be mine right now. And I got it through my Jose Silva ultra mind method. <laughs> it's be real, be you, be confident. That's good. <laughs> no, nothing to add. Um, what's your um, best time management advice? Okay. <laughs> Some people are going to have a hard time with this one. <laughs> sleep until you wake up. I love that. Yeah. More sleep. It's, it's, I, I teach it. I was actually talking to uh, someone that just joined the RTA today. And we were talking about sleep and I was like, how many hours you sleep? He's like, I don't have time for sleep. I'm like, that's the problem. Like yeah. you can't manifest your best life if you don't invest in yourself first. So one thing I really changed um, through the years is instead of thinking that meditation and sleep and all that stuff is a waste of time because I'm so hustler. I'm a hustler. Everybody say about hustle, 10X. No, no, no. Prioritize yourself, become your best version. And you'll be like a magnet to whatever you want to attract. Tony Robbins in his last book said that he wished he would have sleep more because now you understand how important it is. And we're so focused on chasing the money that we skip that part. Mm -hmm. But actually, just a quick example that not sleeping enough, you can lose up to 50% of your focus. Yeah. So it takes twice as time to do most of the stuff. So your exactly. two hours that you add is going to change your, a lot of things. It's the best time management because once you start, when you go to bed at a decent time, so I try my, I have my window between 11 and 1130 is when I ideally go to sleep and I sleep without the alarm. I sleep until I wake up. I wake up refreshed. I wake up generally about the same time every single day. My body gets about seven and a half hours sleep. That's all I need. Mm -hmm. And I can then go and do all of the other things. I'm refreshed. I'm not tired throughout the day. I have energy. I feel great. I don't have that jar you know that that adrenaline dump that happens when your alarm goes oh, like you know yeah, you yeah. Feel it. that messes you up oh, that's toxic adrenaline it. can my, kill a baby why would you want it in your system my girl so, was putting an alarm i told her no nah, no nah, no more no I, I can't deal with that shit and she was putting the phone in the kitchen like i the, you know the iphone if you don't if you don't stand up it's it will not never quit stop. i was like <laughs> and it gets louder it. I was like, stop it, stop it. There's no more alarm. After one week, I was like, no, no, no. Either either we go to bed earlier. If you have a call in the morning and you need to wake up, we, we sleep earlier and that's it. We wake up by ourselves. I'm not doing, I never did the alarm. I think last time I had an alarm, it, it was maybe for school because yeah. even when I was working at TD Bank, like at the bank, I, I picked a shift that I was starting at 1 p.m. until 10. So I'm not into traffic. And I can just sleep in the morning, wake up at like seven, eight, do my things and then go. I, I just, I hate it. I hate alarm. I just could never deal with that. Yeah. And that's, um, the, but that's the best time management I can say for anyone is once you get into that habit, then it becomes habits. Right. And mm -hmm. then you just do one progression after the other and life just becomes easier. That's the best. Um, we're going to end up this podcast with an advice that you would tell your younger self and advice that you wish now Sandy is meeting Sandy at 20 years old. What do you tell her? You can tell her like kind of one thing, like. Invest in yourself. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Don't invest Spend in other investing. people. Don't spend your money on garbage. <clears throat> invest in yourself, meaning your education, uh, investments, financial investments for yourself. My dad used to always tell me set 20% of your salary aside for yourself. And I was like 20%. And I go, what if I have bills to pay? He goes, then don't pay the bill. And I didn't understand what he meant until years later when I went, I wish I'd listened to my dad. 
<laughs> yeah, after my bankruptcy, actually, um, I be, I went into um, 50%. I saved 50%. Uh, like, I had two salary coming, let's say. I was making 10,000 a month back then. So I had 5,000 going in one bank account and 5,000 in another bank account. I could never see the other five. It was going in another bank account that I don't carry the card with me. I can only spend what's in this bank account mm -hmm. for everything, including rent, whatever, activity, restaurants. And it was motivating me because when I was seeing that bank account go low, I was like, I need more money. And so I'm manifesting money. And at the end, I had like money in the other account, but I couldn't touch it. And, and even now, if, if, if I made a lot of money, like I still did, like, I still don't consider I live my life like a millionaire right now. Like, even though I have the money because I evolved, like one day I will, like when I, when I will make like 15, 20 million a year, I will elevate my, my thing. But I understood that the apartment that I luxury is enough. You don't need ASAP that $2 million house that will put you in a stress or this or that whenever you can afford it. I told myself, I'm going to buy this house, $2 million, when I can pay the down payment of 20% either in one or two months. That's when I get it. And that's a challenge for me. I'm like, yeah, you know what? Let's motivate this. And the first month that I make the price of my Porsche in one month, I'm going to go buy it. Not cash. I'll take a finance, but I'm going to go buy it to ruin myself. I can't go and buy a Porsche now. There's no problem with it. I still, still have plenty of money, but... It's like putting challenge, putting things like, okay, like this, you want material, reward yourself when you do things and you set up other goals. And that's amazing. Um, yep, well, I was exactly. super happy to have you because you're a perfect example of someone that went through a lot of things, like things that are super important for me with the soul, the self-image, the self-love, having an amazing relationship. Now you're engaged, was beautiful. And finally, even if you had all that, the last pillar was not there and it almost killed you. So um, that's a cool story. Like I really, really like it. And um, tell people where they can find you. Well, on social media, I am at Sandy in Focus. And on TikTok, you can find me at sandyinfocus.com because I got locked out of my at Sandy in Focus. But that's okay. That's a whole nother story. Uh, and then Sandy Grigsby on LinkedIn. And my website is sandyinfocus.com. Well, amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you guys for hearing us. I hope you learned something. I hope you can pick up the information. I'll see you next week with another amazing guest.